We learn nothing if we don't understand wins and losses when they happen. Bernie Sanders has lost this primary. And I know that there are still people in my audience who want me to continue drawing up scenarios where Bernie could win. I don't think that that's productive. I think it's more productive and informative to understand why Bernie Sanders lost this primary. So my, here's a, just a, a, a suggestion to the, the Bernie or bust people who I know are in my, my audience because they're tweet, tweeting me like crazy. Tweeting me a lot of anti-Semitic stuff, too, by the way, which is disturbing to see from people supposedly on the left. Instead of just being mad at me, listen to the content of what I'm going to outline and tell me where you think uh, I may be wrong or where you think I may be right. So let's discuss why Bernie lost. Later, I'll talk about, you know, the people emailing me, emailing me saying I will never vote for Joe Biden. I'm out. I'm not voting or I'll write someone in or I'll vote third party or, or Trump even in some cases. Let's deal with these things one at a time. I get that this is going to be painful for a lot of people in my audience. But if we don't do this, we learn nothing. Why did Bernie lose? You're not going to get any hot takes from me here about the DNC rigged it and took it from Bernie. The establishment robbed Bernie. The reasons people lost are that uh, primarily not enough people wanted him to win and they didn't vote for him. OK, there is no question that if you say, well, the establishment stole it, there's no doubt that moderates in this race, we're talking about Amy and Pete and eventually uh, Michael Bloomberg. They decided at some point I'm going to get out of the way because I want my support to go to Biden. That's the path forward. They are moderates. They want a moderate. They did what they needed to do to get a moderate in a position to win. You can't deny that. There's no doubt about that. But it's not stealing it from Bernie. It's realizing, hey, there's millions of moderates voting in the Democratic primary. It's an electorate that doesn't want Bernie to win. And they consolidated their support around one candidate and that candidate was Biden. I would like the Democratic electorate to be more progressive. It's not right now. It's just not. And that's part of why Bernie Sanders lost. Understand. And th I, th I know that this is so painful. Bernie only has 30 percent of the primary vote so far. 30 percent. Even yesterday, when it was Biden versus Bernie alone, there are states where Bernie barely got 15 percent. He didn't get as of right now even 15 percent in Mississippi. Uh, in some of the other states, Missouri, Michigan, Bernie had 34, 36 percent in a two person race. Bernie never polled more than 35 percent until everyone left the race and for the most part was polling 23, 22 percent for most of this race. We're looking at Bernie's polling now. His highest polling level nationally in the Democratic primary was 23 back in April until candidates started leaving. And even with a two person race against Biden, Bernie is still only polling 35 percent right now. So the corporate media was very wrong. Early on, the corporate media said Bernie can't get to 20. His ceilings like 15, 17. They were very wrong. Then the corporate media said Bernie's ceiling is 25 with the Democratic electorate. They were wrong. But there clearly is a ceiling because Bernie, even in a two person race, is getting as little as 15 percent in some states and just never polled more than 23 until the race emptied out and it was him versus Biden. We've got to wake up, guys. This sucks. I get it. The Democratic Party isn't that progressive. Joe Biden is not going to put in the progressive policies that I would like to see put in put put in there. But the DNC establishment doesn't need to steal it from someone who never polls more than 23 during 90 percent of the race and is losing some states with 15 percent of the vote and right now is losing the popular vote in the primaries by one point five million. That's before Florida even votes. It's conceivable that Bernie will lose this primary in the popular vote by more than two million votes. This is a primary, folks. So listen, it hurts, but we learn and gain nothing by just insisting they took they stole it from Bernie. No, the moderates got together and because there's so many of them in the party, they won. Now, this gets us to the next part of the analysis, and I want people to listen very closely here. Why didn't more people vote for Bernie Sanders? Why didn't Bernie get uh, to, to more than 23 percent support in the polls nationally until it was just him versus Biden or at least fewer people? One piece certainly is that Bernie's biggest support age wise comes from 18 to 29 year olds on a percentage basis. 
18 to 29 year olds aren't reliable voters, but that's too simplistic. That's true, but it's too simplistic. Bernie lost because of essentially three different issues. Number one, Bernie's policies aren't as popular as some of us on the progressive left like to believe. It's it it, it sucks. I mean, it hurts to, to realize that. That's number one. Number two, the branding of Bernie's campaign was not good in the sense that while it was a great branding for the progressive left, for the bulk of the Democratic primary voters, it was not good branding. And number three, and you all know I've been covering this for years, Bernie has some very toxic people around him that a lot of voters are instantly repelled by. So let's go through these one by one. Let's start with policy. OK, let's take Medicare. We often say Medicare for all is super popular in the United States. Everybody wants it. So it's obviously great for Bernie to outline it the way that he outlines it. So it is true. People overwhelmingly want Medicare for all uh, as an option when it is worded in a particular way. But when you say to people, are you in favor of your private insurance no longer being an option and um, you having to have Medicare for all support goes way down. Now, I'm, I'm giving you two uh, opposing ways to present it and then we're going to get into the details. This is all based on polling from the Kaiser Family Foundation. They're very, very good on this. If you say to people, do you want a universal government plan available regardless of ability to pay? Support is off the chart, 70, 75, 80 percent, very high support. If you say, should the government regulate the health uh, insurance industry, the health care industry, support is very, very high. If you say to people, what if private insurance were abolished to make way for this? Support is 37 percent. OK, you aren't going to win a primary when your main policy that you were known for has only 37 percent support under some versions of it. It hurts. I wish this wasn't the case, but it is when you say emergency care will be available to all and quickly under a medical care for all program. But like in other countries, wait times for non emergency procedures may increase unless you want to go to a private clinic and pay out of pocket. Popularity goes way down. So one part of this is that we on the left often assume people vote Biden over Bernie because they don't understand Bernie's plans, for example. And if they did, they would obviously vote for Bernie Sanders. The facts don't bear that out. It pains me to say it. The Democratic Party is way more conservative than we progressives like to think. That's problem number one, taking health care as an example. We could apply it to others. Number two, second problem with Bernie's campaign. I've said this for years. This is not Monday morning quarterbacking. Go look at my videos. The framing of Bernie's campaign has been a problem. Why is Bernie calling himself a democratic socialist? His campaign is a campaign of social democracy. Why call yourself something you aren't? And then when people bring it up, he says, well, I'm talking about democratic socialism like Denmark, not Venezuela. You're creating an optional problem. There is no reason to do this. And the rebuttals have been very lame. One rebuttal when I say this is David, the right's going to call him a socialist either way. So he might as well call himself that. Why should he call himself that if it doesn't apply just because Republicans will call him that? That's not a good argument. And by the way, this is something that hurt him in the Democratic primary. The fact that Republicans are going to call him a socialist either way is different than the problem that he has in the Democratic primary. North Florida Democrats aren't that thrilled about voting for someone who calls themselves uh, a, a Democratic socialist. Missouri Democrats aren't that thrilled about voting for a Democratic socialist. So it hurt him. The talk of revolution also hurt him. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. But the Democratic electorate didn't want it. And that's why Bernie has 30 percent of the primary vote so far. Lastly, Bernie had and has toxic people around him that a lot of Democratic voters simply want nothing to do with. I told you yesterday that Sunday night Bernie was introduced at a Michigan rally by this imam who suggested the conspiracy that ISIS is really controlled by Israel, playing this anti-Semitic trope of, you know, there are Jews, crafty Jews behind the scenes in the shadows, actually the puppet masters of everything that you see. It's an anti-Semitic trope. The guy introduced Bernie Sunday night. There's a longer list of people. We don't need to go through it now. So this is the reality. I can't pretend like it's anything else because I would be dishonest. Now, people will be mad at me. Some of you will unsubscribe because I'm talking to you like adults about things as they are rather than things as I would wish them to be. 
You should see what was going on on Twitter last night. I was getting destroyed, but I don't care. OK, the stakes are too high. And so I'm not going to play games here and I'm just going to tell it like it is. I'm told that there are channels that will just keep telling you, here's how Bernie can still win. Here's how Bernie can still win. Um, if that's what you want, if that will placate you for another few weeks or a month or whatever, that's available. That's not going to be this channel. If you want channels to tell you why you should feel good about not voting for Biden, even if it helps Donald Trump get reelected, you can find those. And that's the thing I'm going to talk about on the other side of, of the interview. Uh, what about this issue of to vote for Biden or not the Bernie or bus component, blank votes, no votes, all of this stuff. We're going to deal with that later. In the meantime, though, for more on this, make sure you're following us on Instagram at David Pakman show. Follow me at David Pakman while you are there as well. Check out the excellent YouTube channel we're partnering up with called Upflip. You can get there at davidpackmancom slash Upflip. The link is right underneath this video. Make sure you subscribe while you are there. Upflip is a YouTube channel that looks at entrepreneurship in a very interesting way. Their content looks at small businesses, what makes them successful. Each video you get to meet a new entrepreneur, get a behind the scenes look at their daily grind, learn their philosophy, learn their business. As a business owner myself, as someone with an MBA, I love watching the content. There's a ton of really useful insight to come away with from every episode. I love hearing what the entrepreneurs share. You get practical advice. They talk about outside the box strategies. And even if you don't own a small business yourself, I think you'd be fascinated by the content on Upflip. Perfect for people who like shows like Shark Tank and that sort of thing. Get to the Upflip YouTube channel by going to davidpackman.com slash upflip. The link is underneath the video. They're friends of the David Pakman show. Definitely make sure to subscribe to their channel. Click that bell icon on their page so you'll be notified whenever they upload a new video.